I am here at the Guitar Shop NYC, home of Alinto basses, Labella strings, and Carbonetti guitars. But I am here, as you can see, with Spectre basses. Now, two years ago, Spectre did this amazing project you might remember called the Woodstock Custom Collection, where every builder, every team member of Spectre was asked to build and design their own base. They were one of one custom creations, and I got to unveil those instruments. It was absolutely incredible. This bass, my own personal five string, was born out of that experience, and two years later, we're doing it again. We're back in New York, this time down in Brooklyn. We're hanging out. We're doing the Woodstock Custom Collection 2. I haven't seen these basses. You haven't seen them either. Come on, let's check them out. Okay, first up is an absolutely beautiful NS5. This one is a lot like mine, actually, but Colin designed this bass. Now, Colin works in the shop staining, sanding, doing so many things. Will, what else is Colin Carving. doing? Carving. The thing about this instrument that's so cool is that it has solid Buckeye wings, and that's very, very unusual. Typically, Buckeye is reserved for a top, right? And you don't have a piece of Buckeye that is big enough to make full-on body wings. So you can see there's no seam, and it is just incredible. Of course, has pre-EMGX pickups, 34-inch scale, uh, and then it has the matching cap up here, gorgeous. And it has J pickups, five string, right? But in 60s vintage locations. So it has kind of a mellow jazz bass-esque sound, right? That's both pickups on full. Here's the neck. Something that has always stood out to me about EMG pickups in general is that the bridge pickups have useful low end. They don't sound too thin and pingy. Oh, and especially on a bass like this, where that bridge pickup is pushed forward slightly, you get even more of that low end response from the bridge pickup. Back to the middle. Get that like scooped out jazz bass thing. Uh, okay, check, check this out. This is Fen's bass. Fen works in the shop doing all the neck, fret work, the carves. This is an unbelievable bass. Check this out though, reverse P, but in a vintage location, right? Fralin P pickup. This is solid quilted wings. So again, no top. It's really fun to see the quilt, the wavy quilt lines go all the way through the body here. Of course, three piece maple neck, standard, passive, just volume and tone with a more thin cut sort of jazz bass-esque neck. And it is about as like simple and solid as you can get. There's not a lot going on with the electronics, so it's really fun because you just focus on playing it. Tone control, maybe roll it back a bit. That's cool, you get that sort of like muted thing. but maybe you open it up, grab a pick, and then it's sort of that classic P bass. Right? Okay, what do we have here? It's delightfully punchy, active NS2. This was from Jesse and Tim, newcomers to the shop. Check out this color. I mean, fellas, we get in on this color? This is 
essentially a fade going from color shift purple and green here, fading up to the upper horn, horns up here, black. So if you can get in on that, I'll try to move it around too. See what camera is gonna pick it up the best. Check out the back of it too. Absolutely beautiful. Something a little different on this one too, alder wings and uh, three piece maple neck, ebony fingerboard. I'm just checking it out here. Aguilar pickups and pre and very like bright and articulate, right? So if you want that thing, this is your bass. There's both pickups on full. Here's neck. Reverse P, Aguilar's. This pickup sounds good. Here's the bridge. So that's gonna be for all of the Blend back to the center. Oh, I love this bass. I mean, again, we're seeing that there's all this variation, right? From a passive peace style instrument to something more modern and bright. Um, and I find that when I play a bass that wants to lean a certain direction, I wanna take it in that direction. I don't wanna try to compensate. So I wanna play stuff that feels articulate, snappy, and bright on a bass like this. Awesome, let's move on. Ah, I mean, just check this out. Rock and Roll Machine, a Spectre X. I've never played one of these before. This is an incredible treat. Uh, Will, what do you call the color? What's this color? Charcoal frost metallic. Charcoal frost metallic on this great shape. The first time ever, ready for this? Bam, full mahogany, body, neck, the whole thing's made out of mahogany and you're gonna feel it, you're gonna feel it. But if you want a bass, if you're not scared of a little weight in your bass, you wanna play some rock and roll and drop D with a pick, this might be the bass for you. This is Gabe's design. Again, everybody signs these on the headstock here. All the information to you guys is gonna be available at specterbass.com and check it out. This also has DiMarzio Billy Sheehan Relentless pickups, essentially giant humbuckers. Sort of emulating that like mud bucker thing, but let's not get it twisted. They don't have to be full on like rock machines. If I dial into the middle, mid-range comes out a bit. How about dialing back to the bridge? You hear the bridge characteristic come out, but not a lot of like top end. But really forgiving when you hit it. So if you have like an aggressive finger style technique, you want to play harder the pick. And the output is crazy. <laughs> we had to turn the amp down a bit. It's shaking the room. Really fun. Again, this is a first for me and actually a first for Spectre uh, with the full mahogany build. And something that isn't totally typical for Spectre is binding, especially like right around the entire body. That binding continues up the neck, always nice to offset like the black dots. You can see this <laughs> no matter what venue you're in or lighting situation, kind of completes the rock and roll package. I really like this bass. Good job, Gabe. Well done. How about this fretless five walnut, all walnut with this pinstripe through it. Is the top different than the back? Figured walnut. Figured walnut on the top, walnut on the back, neck again? Roasted maple. Roasted maple. Oh, this is Drew's base. Amazing, lined ebony board, just gorgeous. I'm just admiring it. Like I played it, I haven't even really looked at it. Gorgeous. EMGX soap bars here. 
attached to a has pre something about a neck through base just the presentation of sustain and kind of how you how i treat a bass that's neck through i lean into maybe notes that sustain a little longer i don't feel like i have to keep articulating <laughs> That's so nice. And check that out, like vibrato, right? On an instrument like this. So that was both pickups in the center. Here's neck. Cool, like almost sort of more of a P bass presentation. Maybe like more, a little more groovy. Right, and then jazz, bridge pickup. I always think of a jazz bass, right? Gorgeous, gorgeous bass. Walnut monster. Again, got some heft to this one, right? Not for you if you need a feather light bass, but there are some things about that heft and about those materials that really contribute to the tone of this instrument. Okay, inspired by catalog guitars. This is Adam's design. Adam works in the shop doing final assembly. And I remember Adam's bass from last time. Adam did the Burgundy Mist sort of like Thunderbird inspired bass. Yes, got it, okay. Well then that stands to reason why he would do this. This is so cool. Guys, can we get in on this? Come on, look at this gold sparkle. It's like a copper gold sparkle, but it was hand done. So the idea was to do it in line of those like catalog guitars so that it wasn't perfectly applied, right? So it was hand done and there's certain spots on the bass that have more sparkle than others. I mean, and come on, revealing the tortoise backplate like this. There's all these cool tortoise shell accents. The binding, come on, I'm such a sucker for tortoise shell binding. That is so cool. Oh, also, I've just noticed that we've got a tortoise shell binding around the headstock, but then pearl, right, on the actual face of the headstock, tortoise shell on the truss rod cover. Very cool. And then check out these inlays. They look like picks. Will, are they supposed to be picks? Yes. You know, I'm... Um... Adam, Plectrum. <laughs> okay, right? Plectrum. I'll let that slide. I'll let that slide. I like that. Uh, ebony fingerboard attached to these two pickups made by Mojo. These are Dyna P90 bass pickups um, with these great retro knobs. I feel like... Adam's bass last time had cool retro knobs and I asked him about them and he said, oh yeah, I brought those from home. I wonder if he did that for these as well. He did, yes. I'm three for three on this one. Um, so check that out. We've got volume and then you think this is a tone knob, but check it out. This is actually a rotary stellar tone. So it's sort of like position notches. Functions very similarly to a tone control, but like if I just play some and I roll it back, actually the best way to hear it is just to tap a note kind of roll it back. Cool thing about that is if you find one that you like, you can kind of stop there, right? Neck pickup sounds like this. Bridge pickup. Middle. Just totally like retro design vibes, sound. And you know what? You embrace that 60 cycle hum because it's part of the vibe, right?
Jeff. Our man Jeff right behind the camera. This is Jeff's bass inspired by his dad's 1971 Datsun 240Z. Datsun 240Z. Oh. And Will at the shop just totally went crazy with this one. Did these really cool inlays. There's a Z logo, right? Like the Datsun logo there at the 12th fret. And then, you know, all of the lines and the boxes inlays are supposed to sort of be the aluminum trim. Is that right? On this and check out the logo at the top. Inspired by the Datsun logo. So cool. And of course, it's orange. And I believe that there's a very specific color name for this, right, Jeff? What is it? Correct. It's called Orange. <laughs> Straight up Orange. I love that. Just committing to Orange. This is all maple base, maple wings attached to, of course, neck through three piece maple neck. It's the thin carve, and it's attached to a Curtis Novak Bisonic pickup. Right, you've got volume and tone. And again, with this bass, it has the stellar tone, so the clicks. So you can kind of find a tone setting that you like with the clicks and go for it there. So it can get really dark and vintage if I roll it all the way off. Roll it up a couple clicks. hip shot low D option. I gotta use it and it's so fun to slap on a Spectre. Hey, check this out. This is Chris's bass. This is the Catskills bass. Chris, who works in the shop spraying basses, loves the outdoors. And hey, you know what? This bass is an homage to that, right? Look at this, the foliage, the green, uh-huh. And how about the redwood back? This is reclaimed redwood from water towers in New York. And of course, look at this. My hand was covering it up, now let's reveal it. Water tower inlay made with, I believe, redwood also. Like the redwood from the water tower made the water tower inlay. How cool is that? And you know, the connection, right, between the water towers and Spectre is that right near the shop in Woodstock, the Ashokan Water Reservoir, that's where New York City gets most of its water, 60%. We're gonna say, we're gonna, we're gonna ballpark it, 60%. So check that out, beautiful. And look at the fade on the back of the neck, gorgeous. And I remember seeing this when I was last at the shop, this like really beautiful straight grain redwood. You know, and after a while, these water towers get decommissioned, the wood comes down and they have to go somewhere. So why not into a gorgeous instrument like this, right? Maple neck, got lumen lace side dots, got the matching headstock. Very cool, the hip shots with the uh, detuner. And then we've got DiMarzio pickups that are radius, so a PJ set attached to a has pre, and they're radius like the bass. So there's a curvature in the pickup. So when you're playing over them, right, your finger falls in the same spot over each pickup, which is very cool. Sort of like a ramp, like Pete actually behind the camera was mentioning kind of ramp-esque. It totally is. Bridge pickup is like that as well. Let's check out these pickups. We've got both pickups on full. Here's neck. We've got rear. And right, these are not in 60s locations, but these are called DiMarzio 60s. But the cool thing about not vintage locations, it's just what you prefer. Right, so if you want a warmer thing, you can have these uh, instruments made in 60s locations with the pickups where they're pushed further toward the neck. But if you want something that's a little more signature specter, snappier, meaner, that traditional spacing where the bridge pickup is 
pushed a little closer to the bridge gives you all that kind of like aggression. <laughs> This is a beautiful bass. The man that made this bass is sitting right off to my right. Will DeYoung, shop manager, just absolute sweetheart of a man. Tell you what, when I got to build my bass, which is sitting right over here, Will took me through the custom shop. I got to pick stuff out. It's actually a memory that I will cherish forever. And he designed this bass. This bass is to pay homage to the book, The Little Prince, and check it out. We've got this like, just beautiful navy blue color. There's all of these fun design details that echo that book. So like the headstock, the surface of the moon that the little prince is standing on in the book on the cover, this is supposed to be the prince, like what he's wearing, the colors, the white, the yellow, the green. And then we have these hand-drawn stars, yellow stars on the base, like the illustrations in the book and Something super uncommon for Spectre is a rosewood board. And as I was playing this, Will has such a great ear. As I was playing, he was like, man, I hear the softness of the attack. I love that about rosewood. And I'm like, and that's great. I don't hear that all that well, <laughs> but that's incredible. Ears like that, right? And it's connected to two Fralin J pickups. They are humbucking or they're noise canceling, noise canceling pickups, yes. And they're in 60s positions. You just have passive controls, volume, volume, tone. The nice thing about this is there's zero hum, right? So, you know, like a jazz bass in the center, it always hum cancels. But as soon as you start to blend pickups, typically on a jazz bass, you get noise, which is fine. A little noise, it's a sound of rock and roll, but hum canceling pickups are pretty cool right? Because you can blend back to the bridge. There's no noise. Neck pickup. There's something about a jazz bass passive neck pickup, which is one of my favorite sounds of all time. Just kind of old school, but still with clarity, maybe a little bit more top end clarity than a P bass but P bass-esque, right? And it, you know, and as you heard at the top of this with Spectres, I just wanna play long notes up high. And check that out, even on a fretted instrument with this kind of sustain, you can get notes to move. Hey, check out Rob's bass. All right, look at this thing. We've got redwood, figured redwood on the top. So not reclaimed, like this beautiful, like mild figured redwood. And then we have it on the back as well. But then there is this maple sandwich situation going on in here, right? Quilted maple, flamed maple, figured maple, the catch all, right? in the center, and then all of these awesome maple appointments like maple knobs, figured maple knobs, of course the three-piece neck, see that there on the back, but then a figured maple fingerboard, but this is bark infused, I'm told. I don't know what that means. What does bark infused mean? It means there's bark in it. <laughs> it means there's bark in it. But look at that, you get this cool figuring in the fingerboard, it looks a little different than a standard maple fingerboard. And this thing, is an absolute active beast. I was playing kind of down low on it. With the active specters, especially fives, there is a springiness to the B. Like, listen to that. Here, check this out. Like, if I turn off the bass, I mean, that's like big in the room, just acoustically, right? Totally comes through, but what it does is it makes me want to play aggressively on an instrument like this with this electronics package, has, right, big EMG soaps. It 
rewards you for playing kind of aggressively on it. Like obviously you can play lighter, but when you want to dig in, oh, the B string is awesome. Oh, like when a bass sounds like that, I just want to do the thing that it's good at, right? Like it's got all that top. So for all that like aggressive playing, like maybe Flea or, you know, slapping like Larry Graham, you know? It's like a rock and roll machine. Okay, this is John's bass, and we've got three super rock and roll T-Bird Lawler pickups, right? But check this out. What you were hearing right there was just the outside pickups, right? The bridge and the neck together, blended together. There's a volume control, there's a blend. So like a standard two pickup bass, there's a blend between the rear bridge pickup and the neck pickup, right? So you were hearing just that. Here's the neck. Oh, check that out. Here's bridge. But the secret sauce is this middle pickup. Now there's a tone control, passive tone control, darkens the whole bass up, right? But this knob, is very cool, the secret knob. This, when it's off, two pickup operation. But as you roll this in, it introduces the middle pickup, okay? And it almost acts like a mid boost. You can kind of think like middle pickup gives you a different character in the mid range. Check that out, right? So if I roll it off, kind of like more of the scooped, almost jazz bass-esque two pickups on together vibe. Roll this in, right? It gets more like mm, in the bottom mid range. And then, so, like, let's say you wanted to use these two pickups, what you would do is you would blend to the front. And now, because you have this knob rolled in, you have these two together. Totally different than just the neck pickup alone, right? So, it gives you almost a more like stout, big neck pickup vibe. And then if we go back to the bridge pickup, now you have these two together. That's cool, right? It's different than just the bridge alone. It's a little thinner. So it's almost like, I feel like John, you were saying like the spirit of the Gilmore, like strat wiring, there's like a boost, right? In this, this pickup is the thing that's giving you a boost. So it's not like a preamp, it's like actual passive boost due to a pickup. It's very cool. In terms of wood, check it out. We've got flamed maple on the top. We have, uh, then the back of the base is ash and Mary Kay finish, right? Which is very cool. And then we've got three piece maple neck, but it's roasted. So you get that nice caramely color. And then check out this ebony fingerboard with these custom, Ah, almost like tortoise shell. Beautiful like yellow tort inlays. Super cool, like the crowns, but not the perloid material. It's custom tortoise material. That also happens up here on the headstock with the logo. And just, again, like a very super rock and roll bass. Check this bass out. This is Taylor's bass. I mean, why did we save this for last? I think it's obvious. Look at this thing. Like you can't lead with this bass. This is inspired by 80s skateboards. My first board was a Nash. I think Taylor's yours was too. Santa Cruz boards as well though. Like 
Look at this thing. Hey, you ready for the back? I don't think you're ready. Look at the back. Look at the neck, the crazy stripes, totally skateboard inspired. And this is so fun, right? Plexi cover. It's like always gut shot. That's so fun to see inside. Dark glass tone capsule in this one, nine volt. And then you heard it. You heard me messing with this. This is so cool. There's a kill switch on the base. And if you can get in on this, guys, the kill switch lights up. So you can see it, right? <laughs> like, like you can see the base. You can also see this kill switch. And it's a really satisfying press. We've got volume. We have pickup blend. We've got stacked bass and treble. And then this kill switch. And so I was using like a crazy uh, synth sound, right? And if you press the button, the bass completely goes away. Open it up. So it's so fun with something that is really effect heavy, like, you know, this preset that I have in the Line 6 HX Stomp that's just like a 80s synth sound with reverb and delay. Because then when you play the sound, shut it down, you still hear that delay and reverb kind of trail off. Very cool, but let's take off the effect and I'll show you how it sounds just without a crazy synth sound on as well. All right, before we hear it clean, we have to talk about this finish. So this is a custom dipped finish from Dave Bonvillain, who did all of Steve Vai's most recent guitars that have a similar finish. And it is, as you can see, absolutely insane. And it gets even crazier because it glows in the dark. I think we got some B-roll, gonna put it up. Check out how this thing glows. And even the back stripes on the neck glow in the dark in this amazing way. Black lights light it up, it's crazy. And then we have these cool like acrylic crown inlays, ebony neck, ebony fingerboard rather, and then this matching headstock with the crazy like dip on it as well. And of course, this bass should be active. This bass should be aggressive. And is it ever? I mean, I said it had a dark glass tone capsule, which it does, but I misspoke and said that it was a treble control. It's actually more like a high mid range. So check out this control. You push that a little bit. Oh, it just brings out so much aggression and top of the bass. Not tip top treble, but more like a little lower. So it's almost sounds like. It's not overdrive, but it definitely brings out like an aggressive frequency in the bass. And then it has a bass control as well that gets huge. So if you want to play an aggressive sound, aggressive music, and have like the coolest looking bass that anyone has ever seen, check this out. So there you have it. We've checked out 12 brand new one of one Spectre bases from batch two of the Woodstock Custom Collection. Now look, one of one, that means if you want one of these, go to spectrebase.com and you can get all of the details, check out all of the specs and purchase one. Or maybe you saw something that you didn't even think was possible on a custom build. Remember, that Spectre is a custom shop. They can build you your dream base. They did for me, right? So go to spectrebase.com and let these be your inspiration to build your dream base. I have been Ian Martin Allison. Thanks so much for watching.